सर को ज्वाइन करा लें नहीं तो बाद में मुश्किल हो जाए ओके Memory source person is joining. I think by mistake he has joined from another email ID. So I have just told him he will be joining soon. Okay, so good morning, sir. Good morning. Okay, so before starting this webinar, uh, we all want to have a one group photograph. Okay. Okay. Uh, so all the girls, please switch on your cameras and mute yourself. Everyone. Yes, I request all the girls and colleagues to switch on the camera so that we can have a good photograph. Be quick, girls. Turn on your cameras. Your camera is off. I'm actually, actually I joined two MCM on Python. All right, all right. Can you check on the feed? Yes. Let me check out, please. Thank you. I'm kindly start recording. Okay. Done, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. OK, thank you, everyone. Now you can just switch off your cameras. And please mute yourself. We are just going to start our this webinar.
on the girls please mute yourself rakesh sir can you please mute yourself you can just unmute after the introduction So good morning, everyone. Dear Greeks and students, on the behalf of Institution Innovation Council (IIC 3.0) of Major Chand Mahajan, DAV College for Women, I welcome you all on the occasion of attending a webinar on intellectual property and rights and patents. The resource person for this webinar is Mr. Rakesh Rakesh Kumar Kushwaha, who is a government employee working as an assistant controller of patents. and design of electrical section in indian patent office new delhi under the ministry of commerce and industry before we start this event i would like to shed some light on our prestigious college and on institutes innovation council iic mehesh chand mahajan dav college for women popularly known as mcm dav was established in 1968 by the dav managing committee new delhi to mark the meritorious services rendered by justice meher chand mahajan former chief minister chief justice of india this is one of the best colleges in this part of the country mcm is highly reputed for its superior academic programs intellectual vigor cultural and moral sensitivity dedicated faculty and students achievements now let me shed some light on the iic committee IIC encourages inspires and nurtures young students by exposing them to new ideas and process of resulting in innovative ideas and entrepreneurship in their initial years IIC focus on creating a complete ecosystem to foster the culture of innovative ideas to the students and promote them to create startups and entrepreneurial ventures in the past IIC committee have been organizing workshops seminar and various expert talks on different aspects of innovation startups and entrepreneurship to accomplish the aim of IIC today we have organized a session where mr rakesh will shed some light on intellectual property rights and patents a patent is a intellectual property right for a technical invention it allows one to prevent others from using his invention for commercial purposes for up to 20 years i hope that all of you will learn immensely from today's detailed discussion on patents and ipos now i would like to request dr indu arora vice president of iic to formally welcome our resource person thank you dr palvi good morning everyone it is my proud privilege to welcome mr rakesh kumar kushwaha assistant controller of patents and designs at intellectual property office delhi on the behalf of iic at mcm sir you have been examining various patents filed by technical applicants for the past 8 years and i welcome you to be among us for this session which has been organized to create awareness about intellectual property rights and patents this webinar will help our aspiring entrepreneurs to enhance their knowledge about copyrights and patents and this knowledge will go a long way in the journey of entrepreneurship sir i also thank you very much for giving your kind consent for this session in these challenging times and now without wasting much time i request you to start the session thank you okay thank you ma'am uh, uh i am audible to all of you yes sir yes sir yes, yes sir uh, good morning uh, good morning everyone uh, first of all i would like to express my uh, gratitude towards the management for inviting me and giving me this opportunity 
to interact with you and share my experiences, uh, views on the topic IPR and patents. Today, I will discuss uh, what is IPR, what is patent. Uh, I will discuss uh, patent in detail. Um, well, how a patent application is filed, what happens to your patent application when you file in the office, how it is processed, what are the steps through which it passed, which it goes through. And in the end, uh, I will describe how uh, this patent information can actually help you in your project, in your research. So uh, let's start with the presentation. I'm sharing my screen right now. Hope it is visible to you all. Yes, sir, it's visible. So, uh, intellectual property rights and patents. So, uh, before understanding uh, the intellectual property rights, uh, let us first uh, understand what is IP. So, intellectual property uh, is a category of property, like a, a conventional property is also a property which actually is the creation of human intellect. It is a creation of human mind. Uh, you have an idea and you create uh, something with that idea. So this is your intellectual property. Uh, examples include the inventions, literary, artistic work, designs, symbols, name, images, all which are used in commerce. These are all uh, intellectual property. Uh, this is a intangible property, like uh, uh, unlike other uh, conventional properties, intangible means it, it cannot be defined by its physical parameters. So uh, it needs to be expressed in some discernible way uh, so that it can be protected. Every uh, intellectual property needs a lot of effort, energy, time, uh, uh, capital, and of course the education or knowledge. Uh, so it is very important. To respect and recognize the intellectual uh, creation of the creator so this is uh, uh, for, uh we uh, get this protection with from ipr so uh ipr uh why uh, this is important actually to protect the ip because it not only motivates uh, the creator but it also promotes innovation creativity and also ensure that uh, the original and genuine products available in the market so IPR, uh, IPR is uh, actually intellectual property right is a right given to the person over the creation of their mind. You get right over your creations. And th this protects your invention from being copied or imitated without your consent. You, nobody can copy and imitate it without your authorization. So you get the protection of your intellectual property. There are uh, several uh, IPRs, in, there are different IP, IP intellectual property. So needs of all the IP is also different. So uh, they cannot be protected under a single canopy. So we have different uh, IPR, like um, most commonly which of, of which are this patent, trademarks, copyrights, geographical indication, industrial design. Patent uh, is a, a statutory right uh, given for invention. I will discuss detail in the coming slide. The trademark. Trademark is actually a sign or logo which distinguishes a good service, goods or services of a company from other company. Uh, you uh, all are uh, aware actually of many of the trademarks around you. Most importantly, might have been using this Apple phone. You see, the Apple trademark is uh, how it is popular. Uh, people start uh, the importance uh, of this trademark. Uh, you can imagine that people start knowing the product only by the sign and symbol. By this, uh, by seeing the apple, uh, the sign, you can imagine the the apple phone. And then uh, you have Nike, Reebok. All these trademarks are uh, popular trademarks. You know. Then copyrights. Copyrights are the rights uh, uh, the, given to the creators over their literary, artistic works like books, music, films, uh, images, all these things. Then uh, it is geographical indication. Geographical indication uh, is a sign on the product which are originated from a, uh, a specific geographical region. So, uh, and uh, most uh, often the, uh, most often the name of the location is also associated with the product. First, like uh, this Banarasi Sari, the Banaras name is uh, associated with the product. You, uh, uh, because the importance of the place. 
so uh, when, uh, this uh, other example uh, i mean include this like uh, uh, you darjeeling tea see darjeeling tea the people associate this uh, products are from the uh, darjeeling area this because they want to emphasize that it is from this particular location and it is uh, good quality it is having a good quality the industrial design industrial design are, uh, deals with the only aesthetic part of any product how it looks only design only aesthetic part like uh, the shape of any bottle the shape of uh, say pen of your shoes shape of mobile these are all covered in industrial designs now uh, these are uh, uh, i hope uh, this can is visible it is coca cola can is in the picture there are how uh, there are different iprs which are associated with the can is uh, uh, you can see many ips uh, intellectual property uh, can be associated with a product you can see in the example this coca cola logo it's covered under trademark then opening of the bottle the ring pull can is covered under patent design of the bottle is under design act then uh, this image of the coca cola is covered under the copyright act so you can see how many uh, intellectual uh, properties get associated with the product and how a product uh, being developed with these uh, resources so now what is patent patent is a statutory right for a uh, invention it is a right given to you by a law so it is a statutory right for invention it is granted for a limited period uh to the patent by the government limited period is uh, in the in india the uh, patent is granted for 20 years from the date of filing and uh, uh, you are uh, getting patent and in exchange uh, you have to disclose your invention you are disclosing your invention for the benefit of the public so that any other person other interested person inventor or uh, uh, knowledgeable person can uh, read your invention and work upon it and uh, uh, take your invention to a, a more further level so it is a, a mutual uh, uh, you can say agreement you are disclosing your invention and in return you are taking it and you are taking rights so let's discuss what are the rights you get by uh, your patent uh, means if you are disclosing your invention it is your it was your property now you are disclosing it for the public benefit of the public so you should also get in return okay so uh, these are the rights rights attached to a patent so rights uh, uh, which are uh, attached to the patent your patent actually uh, uh, you can say it is a negative right it excludes the others from doing uh, making using selling and importing the patented product a process without your consent these all these activities making using selling these are all prohibited If nobody can do it without your authorization you are only the uh, owner until unless you authorize it nobody can do all these things making using selling it is not allowed only by your proper authorization one can uh, go through so it becomes our uh, 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 property patent acts and rules so patent rights are governed by the indian patent act 1970 uh, and uh, there are rules also for which are made by the government so there, there is a patent rule 2003 with patent act 1970 has also been amended several times patent several uh, two or three times and the patent rules these are the rules made by the government the office for proper functioning of the act and laws these are, are uh, the uh, rules are made by indian patent office and then uh, for proper understanding of the patent rights we have the manual office uh, has prepared a manual those who want to understand the patent rights what is there in it you can go to the manual of the patent office practice and procedure which is available on the website it is it was prepared in 2008 then was amended and then again uh, uploaded on the website in 2019 you can go to if any problem in understanding the patent act patent rights you can go to this manual now uh, let's understand what is the criteria of patent how what is the uh, uh, main uh, important uh, criteria which of uh, invention should have to get a patent so invention must be uh, a process or a product or both the process is a uh, product is means a chemical compound here prepared chemical compound here prepared device and process is method of manufacturing that chemical compound okay method of doing something which is a uh, uh, technical inventive and what is novel then second criteria is it should be novel and uh, i will discuss in the coming slide all these features 
and third is uh, in most inventive state uh, then uh, it should be capable of industrial application and uh, last one is it should not fall under system 3 and 4 so these criteria uh, once you file a patent uh, uh, and it is uh, examination of this application starts then the office uh, examines your application based on these criteria it checks uh, your patent, whether your patent applicant satisfies these criteria or not so let's learn about these criteria in one by one one is uh, it's new it's one uh, new is uh, means your invention must not be published in india or else it should not be in public knowledge it should not be published in india it should not be in prior public use also and it should not have been claimed before any specification there should not also be any person uh, already filed uh, invention in uh, in your subject matter so all these things are checked by the office whether uh, your application has already been uh, filed by any other person any other person already worked on that so uh, it is uh, like that second is uh, inventive step inventive step is also a feature of invention that involves technical advancement as compared to the existing knowledge having economic significance or both that makes the invention not obvious to a person skilled in the art so you see that uh, your invention uh, should have should be technically advanced as compared to the existing knowledge what is uh, there in the public uh, there should be some improvement and, and they, it should also be cost effective it can be also cost effective if you, you suppose the product is there in the market and you have prepared another product which is uh, taking less resources and is cheaper than the earlier one then it can, uh, can also be considered and uh, uh, and the last one is both this feature including both this feature the most important feature is the invention should not be obvious having technical advancement uh, having economy uh, being economic uh, cost effective uh, but it should also be not it should also be not obvious to a person skilled in the art yeah, person skilled in the art is uh, a hypothetical person having a common uh, general knowledge related to the field to which your invention pertains so uh, if a person also uh, think uh, by the available uh, existing knowledge you can you can devise your uh, invention by using the existing knowledge then uh, your invention will lack inventive step now uh, the section 3 and section 4 so uh, i discuss you the uh, criteria of patentability so all the invention uh, must fall under the patentability criteria for patenting process patentability criteria is novelty inventive step and industrial application uh, capable of being used or made in industry industrial these three criteria are very important for your invention but apart from these criteria these two sections are also very important section 3 and section 4 section 3 defines what are not inventions it describes uh, 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 if it is not an invention means it is non patentable subject matter and in does not fulfill patentability criteria there are 15 subsections uh, i have mentioned here a few which i come across uh, frequently while examining the application and uh, these are also important so let us discuss one by one by examples first one is frivolous or obviously contrary to the well established natural law uh, uh, contrary to well established natural law means if suppose someone is claiming a machine someone has devised a machine and claiming that uh, the machine is giving 100% efficiency this is not possible so such subject matter are not allowed uh, suppose someone is claiming a machine uh, which is giving output without taking input so the, such type of uh, subject matter not allowed under this category this is section 3a and then second one is 3b contrary to the public order or morality if you are devising anything which is against the public order or morality then it will also be not allowed for example uh, if you are preparing a, a device which is uh, promoting which is used for, used for performing burglary or theft uh, then it will not it will not be allowed for the like gambling device like cloning of humans these are all will come under the public order and morality so type of subject matter not allowed the discovery of scientific principle discovery uh, uh, means uh, it was already existing in nature and you simply just find it so uh, such subject matter is also not allowed then is say, uh, mere arrangement or rearrangement uh, uh, this is uh, simply workshop uh, work if you 
take uh, two or three things and arrange, rearrange them, and then again file a patent application that is my invention. Uh, then uh, it will also be not allowed. Like suppose suppose someone is uh, uh, fitted a um, this fan with a light, and saying that he is uh, uh, devised a machine which is giving airflow with uh, light. So such type of uh, the arrangement will, uh, are not allowed under the patent and anti patent. A mere discovery of new form of known substance with no enhancement in efficacy. If you are discovered a new form of an already known substance and there is no enhancement in efficacy, this is actually section 3D. Uh, you might have heard of this uh, section in the newspaper. It is very important for the pharmaceutical patents. Uh, uh, evergreening, it is uh, defined as evergreening of patent. They used to tweak some uh, features, they change some features and again uh, re try to re-register the patent in their name. So, uh, such type of things are covered in this section 3D. Then as medicinal methods, diagnostic method of treatment of uh, human beings or animals to render them free of disease, they are not allowed. Then mathematical, mathematical formula, if you have uh, uh, created a mathematical formula, you try to get a patent over this, not allowed. Business method, computer programs are, not, computer programs are also not allowed. Now, in the computer programs, I would like to add something that uh, there are several court uh, orders on this computer program and now the computer programs which are uh, having technical advancement and produce technical effect that computer programs are allowed. Now traditional knowledge, traditional knowledge means the knowledge which was already existing with the public uh, uh, and is passed from generation to generations. So uh, like the uh, antiseptic property of haldi and turmeric uh, this uh, uh, pesticide property of neem, you cannot uh, claim that they are uh, your invention. You cannot uh, file patent uh, application uh, related to these uh, these things. Now, section four, section four related to atomic energy. If your uh, uh, invention related to their, some atomic energy, then it will not be allowed. Now, this is a. Uh, am I audible to you, everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, now, flat square bottom paper bag. This is an example of an invention. Flat square bottom paper bag. And so, it, it's a, it is a, I have taken this uh, uh, example. It is a 19th century invention. So, uh, and you, you will be surprised that this could also be an invention. It was invented by a lady, uh, uh, Margaret E. Knight. Uh, and uh, you can see that. Uh, uh, in the 19th century, uh, it was a very important invention. She was working in a, uh, a paper bag factory when he devised uh, this bag. This is a flat, you can see in the picture, it is a flat bottom paper bag. So, uh, what are the uh, this, uh, features of this paper bag is, you can easily keep uh, that paper bag on a flat surface. You can easily put things inside it and uh, it is also more spacious than this bag. So it is looking very simple uh, idea, but uh, this, uh, you can see that how simple idea can bring a lot of change. It was a very popular invention of 19th century. So uh, if you are also if having uh, you are a student, uh, you are also having any idea. So you can uh, proceed, you can file application, you can uh, uh, approach to the patent office. Now, who can file a patent? Patent can be filed uh, either alone or jointly by two and first inventor, to the inventor, and assignee of a person claiming to be two and first inventor. So any person assigned by the two and first inventor, or the legal representative of any deceased person. All these persons are allowed to file the patent application. Now, where to file? You you can uh, approach to the office of the Control General of Patent Design and Trademark. Uh, this uh, where you can uh, file the patent application. Uh, patent application are also allowed uh, online, also electronic transmit, electronic media. You can uh, electronic mode also you can file the patent application. Uh, it started from two three years back. Now there are uh, four patent offices situated in uh, four different uh, at four different locations. Patent office Mumbai, Chennai, New Delhi, and Kolkata. These four top, uh, offices have their own territorial jurisdictions. These jurisdictions are based on the uh, based on these territorial jurisdictions. You can approach to different offices. If you are suppose in northern India, you can approach to the New Delhi. 
patent office. This this is uh, this categorization is based mainly on the place of business or domicile or uh, the uh, area where invention originally uh, this actually originated. Based on this, this uh, area has been divided, and you can approach the different patent office based on that. Now. Uh, uh, when you file a patent application, uh, uh, it is not uh, uh, examination of that application will not start automatically. Yeah, after filing the patent application, you have to also file a request for examination. So, uh, uh, request or examination is filed in form 50. Uh, and only after the receipt of this request or examination, your uh, 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 examination of your application will start. And it can be filed within 48 months from the date of the priority or date of filing, whichever is earlier. Within 48 months, it means four years, around you have four years time for making a uh, request for examination. And it can be filed by the applicant itself or any interested person. Okay. So, a patent office will not start your examination. That you have filed a patent application, it will uh, it, it is uh, being processed by the office. No, you have to file a separate request for examination. And uh, this, uh, this, uh, this is an uh, amendment in the patent rules and the new uh, uh, expedited examination application has been introduced. Uh, this uh, you can also uh, uh, expedite, uh, means you can fast process your application uh, by using this route. Uh, and you can file the request for expedited application uh, examination in form 18A and you can file only in online mode, only by electronic transmission. Uh, based on certain grounds, there are several grounds. I have listed uh, three which are important. Uh, you can see you have to choose India as an ISA. ISA is an in international searching authority. There are several searching authorities in the world. Uh, uh, and you can choose, if you choose India as one of them, then only you can file this application, this credit uh, examination. Or you, you can choose India as IPA, International Primary Examination Authority. Or you are a startup. Or at least one of the applicant is female. You are a girls' college, I think. So I added this. If you are a female applicant, then you can file this. Your application can be processed faster than the other applications on a priority basis. You have to pay. Uh, I will discuss later on the fees for also. So these are the grounds on the basis of which you can expedite your examination. Now this is the fee structure. Fee structure. There is you uh, see in the picture. There are two uh, sections: e-filing and Physical filing. E filing is online filing and it is a physical filing. You, uh, on the, the, the basic application, uh, the natural person, for natural person, startup, a small entity, it, the cost of basic application is 1600. And for others, others means uh, companies, big companies, which are there, they have to, pay for, they have to pay 8000 for the same application. And you can also see the fees for physical filing, it actually is uh, a little bit higher than the online uh, filing. 1600 is uh, fees for uh, e-filing and 1750 for physical filing okay and it, uh, the, your fees is also based on the number of pages in your specification and the number of claims so uh, you see 160 uh, for the number of if you, uh, pages of a specification pages of uh, complete specification increases beyond 30 then 160 per page will be charged and you claim if increases uh, beyond 10, then 320 per claim will be charged for the natural person I am talking about. The, uh, for the companies, uh, fees is a little bit higher. Then uh, fees for request for examination, I have discussed uh, earlier. Fees for request for examination is 8,000 for natural person. And for the companies, uh, sorry, it is 4,000 for a natural person. And for the companies, it is 20,000. And request for expedited examination, it is 8,000 for natural person, startup, small entity, and 60,000 for the companies. And since it is not allowed in physical uh, mode, so there is no fees in incentive. Now, this is, these are the uh, stages of uh, the uh, your patent application, uh, this, how your patent application proceeds when you file uh, it in the patent office. So, uh, first you file a patent application, then it is published uh, after 18 months. The office keep it secret till 18 months, then it, after then it is published in the patent journal, uh, journal which is published by the office. Then if you file a request for examination within time, within 48 months from the filing date of priority date, which was earlier, then it will start, the examination of your application starts. So, and the, your application will be assigned to an examiner. 
examiner studies your application and uh, uh, prepares uh, the objections um, on the basis of his study. He prepares the objections and uh, a list of objections actually, and is uh, forwarded to the uh, controller. Now the controller will see uh, the report of the examiner. And uh, if the controller approves, then the first examination report is generated and is sent to the applicant uh, only by electronic mode. There is no, uh, uh, you will get your APR uh, only on an email. Uh, then you have a six month time to comply with those orders and you will respond, uh, uh, you will make a response and file that response to the BD office. Uh, and you have timeline is six, six months. Within six months, you have to file. And then again, it goes to the examiner. The examiner again sees uh, your reply and is uh, compare, and then uh, he again uh, continues study, and then prepares a report and forward it to controller. Now controller see if the if the objections are, are important, and uh, 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 then he conducts a hearing. If you are applicant is given an opportunity to appear before the controller and present his case. You are uh, uh, hearing nowadays happening on a video uh, conferencing mode. So you appear and uh, you uh, uh, explain the controller uh, the about your invention objections we, uh, are discussed, and then uh, uh, again uh, you have to uh, you given a fifteen uh, days time to file the hearing submission. You have to submit your uh, response in fifteen within fifteen days. And based on the response, then the controller decides uh, the fate of your application. Controller may either grant the patent or reject the patent. Okay. Now, there uh, opposition is also there. Uh, your uh, patent can also be opposed uh, uh, either uh, before grant or after grant. If suppose a patent is obtained wrongfully, someone consider that they, they find that the patent is obtained wrongfully, uh, patent lacks certain criteria, then your grant of the patent can be opposed. So, a pre grant opposition is pre grant opposition can be filed uh, uh, after the application, your patent application is published. Of course, uh, when, it, when it will be published, then only the public will know that uh, this application exists and then uh, and before the grant of the patent. And there is no fee for pre grant opposition, it can be filed by any person. Then post grant opposition, post grant opposition can be filed after the grant of the patent and if, uh, before the, after the grant of the patent and uh, within one year from the date of the grant. The time then uh, uh, prescribed for this, within one year after the date of the grant, uh, uh, and it can be filed with person interested. In the pre grant opposition, it was any person, means any person can file, uh, your oppose, can oppose the grant of the patent. But in the post grant, it person interested. Person interested is, is the person engaged in or promoting research in the same field. So, a little bit of difference is there. So, you can file patent or post ground opposition based on the various grounds which are mentioned in the Patent Act. Now, uh, renewal fee. This is the obligation the patentee has after the grant of the patent. So there is a, after the grant of the patent, uh, you have to pay a renewal fees to keep your patent in force. So, there is no fee for first and second year. And from the third year to the 20th year, uh, uh, you have to pay the renewal fees. And if your patent will lapse, uh, if you will not pay the patent, and there is an annual fee. Uh, and you also, uh, six months relaxation is there if you fail to pay the patent fees. Okay. One thing I would uh, 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 like to add regarding patent is, patent is a territorial right. Means uh, uh, if you file a patent in India, then your uh, uh, you get enforcement only in India. If you want an enforcement in other countries, then you have to file a separate application in other countries. Then uh, uh, we'll discuss how a patent information can help in your project or research. Many of you are uh, having projects or also uh, uh, doing research. So, how this patent information can help in your project or research, we will see in uh, the coming slides. So, you see, uh, all this information, patent information is available uh, publicly. There are several uh, free patent databases available. You can uh, check uh, the various patents, uh, published patent there, uh, and uh, read about those patents. Suppose you, have, you are working on a project. 
and uh, you, uh, you want to get uh, information that whether uh, someone other other person already worked on the project want to know that if uh, there is other person uh, other person in the world every in the world has worked on it then you can search these uh, databases these, these are free databases available this first is in pass indian patent advanced search system this is uh, uh, ip india uh, available on the ip india website in google search patent e space net from the european patent office and patent scope from world intellectual property organization these are free patent databases where they can search the patents now suppose you uh, i was discussing are you uh, suppose working on a project now you want to uh, know uh, whether it is already been um, work has already been done by any other person or you want to uh, study that what uh, work is going on this on your subject so you can uh, go to the this in pass you can access this in pass from the patent india uh, ip india website uh, and there you can see there are several fields for uh, available for search title abstract complete specification so if you uh, uh, access if you suppose if you are working on any uh, project uh, you can place your title on this project uh, this is space provided here and when you search with your title then you will get a, a result uh, the of, uh, you will get the uh, patent already registered with that title suppose i i use i am uh, i have used your hat suppose i start working on a hat and i want to see that whether it has uh, what work has been done in this area so uh, i put here this in the patent uh, the title section in the space here i have uh, written here hat and i when i will click on search then this page will come you see i have found 23 results hat simple i have taken just for example so you can read the title here the hat member manufacturing method there of hat shape member hat and monitoring system so you can see that people have worked a lot uh, on the different subject matter they are available with us free, free of cost we can study that if you find that uh, that your project is important and someone has already worked on it you can uh, con uh, collaborate with it you can ask with it you can learn from it that i am also working on the project i have some idea so uh, by using the uh, this patent website and this uh, information you can actually enrich your knowledge uh, uh, you can decide whether you want to uh, proceed with the project or not because if already the work has already been done then there is no need to proceed with it so such decision you can make easily by using this uh, these free databases and search okay so that's all from my side Okay. Thank you, Mr. Rakesh. Thank you so much for providing such detailed knowledge on different aspects of IPRs and patents. Now, in the end, students who have any queries, they can uh, ask, sir. Okay. Yes, students. Do you have any query regarding this presentation? Sir, actually, I want to ask few of the questions. Okay, Can you tell me what are the career options for a physics student in the patent office? What are the sorry? Please repeat your question. Uh, sir, what are the career options for physics students in the patent office? Oh, uh, like uh, the uh, uh, the office of the controller general actually uh, conduct this uh, examination for this uh, uh, examiner patent design post. So this uh, there is no subjects uh, prescribed uh, for this post. In uh, the various discipline, the patent application can be filed in any discipline. So office needs uh, uh, the examiner from all the uh, subject, uh, uh, all the disciplines. So engineering students are there, physics students are there, chemical chemistry students are there, biotech. All the subject fields uh, 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 this uh, students have uh, can, can can give this examination and they have scope in the patent office. Okay, sir. Thank you, uh, sir. One more question. Um, what are the particular things that the patent office uh, look for? The geographical indications. For example, if I want to uh, patent some something about Punjab, then what are the parameters on which the patent office will look? Regarding geographical indication. Yes, sir. Geographical indication. 
So, for example, in Punjab, uh, there are many food items which are very much famous. So, if we want to uh, file a patent regarding any food item, then what are no, the no, parameters? No, patent uh, geographical indi indication are two different things. Okay, geographical indication also dealt by the uh, the office. Is also dealt by the Chennai office. So, you if you uh, consider that your uh, if your product of your origin is important and you it is unique, uh, having unique some unique features. Uh, which are different from other products and you can approach the office then uh, you have to give a uh, demonstration before the controller general then he will uh, decide whether uh, GIE is given to your product or not. Okay sir. Okay. So sir, one last question. Uh, how can a college uh, be able to contribute innovations of IPF fame or how this office can help in, in boosting our college? Yeah. Well, that's why I told you, you know, this patent information is available to the public. If you have, if you have an idea and you uh, want to uh, study more about an idea, you want to see the status, and then uh, uh, this uh, want to know that uh, that whether your idea is genuine or not, uh, already been um, work has already been done or not, then you can search the patent databases. You can get a lot of information from there. That's why a patent is made public after publication and after the grant it is available to the public. You can uh, go there and search there. You can read a lot of patents. Uh, any projects you are doing, you can uh, just have uh, go uh, just go there and search, and you will get a lot of ideas. People are working okay. over a lot of uh, uh, subject matter. Okay, sir. Thank you. So, so in the last, please, please, uh, Doctor Palvi, can I ask one question? Yes, ma'am. Sure. Uh, sir, if we, uh, we prepare, some, uh, we develop some software. So can we protect that? Yeah, I told you during the uh, slide presentation also that computer program as such are not patented. But uh, if you have uh, this, like if they are, if they are uh, means uh, doing certain kind of special work. That that special work uh, is uh, actually there are many court uh, judgments. And based on the basis of that judgment, actually, uh, law is defined by the judgment, court judgment. So, there are various court judgment on the, this section. Section 3K actually covers the this your computer program. So, there are, there are a lot of judgments on that. And that on the basis of judgment, uh, we are at the conclusion. And this court has given us direction that any uh, computer programs which are having technical advancement plus uh, producing technical effect, then they can only be patented. Yes. Suppose you are um, a computer program has enhanced the efficiency of uh, working of a computer, doing some work in less time, so for making processing faster. Such type of patents are allowed. So, uh, so girls, I request you to feel, please fill the attendance link form that has been messaged in the chat box. So, in the last, on the behalf of our IIC team, I give a really heartfelt vote of thanks to our resource person, Mr. Rakesh Kumar Kushwaha, who spent his busiest time increasing the occasion. Today, we had the opportunity to learn their thoughts, and this is definitely encouraging us in the future events. I also thank to Dr. Nisha Bhagava, President of IIC, Dr. Indu Arora, Vice President of IIC, Dr. Neetu, convener of IIC for inspiring us to organize such events. I pay special gratitude to our coordinators, Ms. Sandeep Kaur and Ms. Manit Kaur, who worked very hard to ensure that this occasion becomes a successful event. Last but not the least, I thank all the students for their cooperation and lending their aids. Thank you, sir. It was a very great pleasure to... Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir.